Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. And, and I, I would like to take note of the fact that I am the last question of the day, so I'll try to move it along as best I can. Also, I want to tell you, I kind of like having my own little table down here. It's nice to be alone down here and just have a little room to spread out. It's very nice, so I don't mind. Um, and Mr. Secretary, it's great to see you again as well. And for the first time since I've joined the subcommittee, I'm very pleased that I'm not going to be inviting you to, to the grand opening of the Silver Line Phase 2. It opened in November. We were very delighted to have you there. Thank you so much for coming. It would have been really embarrassing if I invited you twice and you hadn't shown up. So thank you. Um, it was a pleasure to be there. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I would like, to, uh, Mr. Secretary, I'd like to ask you a little bit about the Leesburg Airport. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that or not. The Leesburg Airport was one of a few, very few airports that participated in the remote tower program, but it was actually a remote tower that was operated. Um, it was entirely, entirely remote, so it was not, there was no tower there at the, at the airport. Um, and as, as you know, the, earlier this year, the decision to start, was made to stop pursuing qualification for the remote tower technology that had been used at the Leesburg Airport for several years. I also won't be surprised to hear that because Leesburg was untowered before it got the remote tower, it did pick up an awful lot of, of traffic during that period of time, and it was really good for the airport and also for the very region. So it's we're very, very concerned about what will happen if, if we stop the entire, if it suddenly becomes untowered without any other, other solution. I appreciate, appreciate FAA's, and I understand that Leesburg and FAA are having, having productive talks about the uh, path forward, and, and we don't have the safety risks that would come from, um, from making it stop altogether. So I appreciate that they're working together come up with a contract power tower program in 2020, construction of a physical tower. Um, I look forward to discussing with this more detail with Administrator Nolan next week. I want to know now, I want to ask you now, can we, can we count on the commitment of the D, D, D Department to assure us of the continuity of air traffic control services beyond FY23 at Leesburg Executive Airport as it transitions from a remote tower to a more permanent solution? Well, thank you. I know that FAA has been uh, closely coordinating with the city and the airport uh, uh, when it comes to the importance of making sure that safe operations continue. Uh, as you noted, uh, and, and my understanding is the same, uh, uh, that there is a, a plan to build a brick and mortar physical tower uh, and uh, Leesburg has been accepted into the federal contract tower program. Uh, my understanding is there's a discussion right now about how it might be possible to use a mobile tower as an interim solution uh, to maintain those separation services. Uh, and uh, you have my commitment that we'll continue to be in good dialogue and work with the city and the airport uh, to find solutions that are going to maintain safety and, and support operations there. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Glad to hear that. And, and it's, it's still going to be nicer than the tower at Manassas Airport. But we'll talk about that next time before us. Um, Union Station, I would like to talk to you a little bit about that. As you know, we're doing, we're doing a lot of real exp expansion work in Virginia. One of the several key projects which will unlock the rail, rail network is the Union Station Expansion Project. It's over a century old and unfortunately desperately needs safety, security, and accessibility improvements. The Union Station is right here. It's very close to the Capitol. It serves a lot of the folks here in the, in the area. A lot of folks take the metro station there to come into work every day. Concerned by the slow pace of progress made by DOT and FRA, on the implementation of the project. It's been nearly a decade since the environmental review of this project began. Over two years since FRA reduced, released the environmental impact statement. Union Station is the only station in the country owned by DOT. Is that right? I believe so, yes. Yeah, and it's a beautiful station. It needs some facelift. The federal government has the responsibility to ensure that the Union Station is maintained and is expanded to meet the needs of the public. Do you agree that the completion of this project is of significant importance to, to both the regional and national interests? Uh, Union Station is certainly a very important facility, both for commuters and for intracity travel. And uh, uh, we want to, we're, we're pleased to see that there is uh, uh, effective leadership uh, with the uh, uh, newly organized uh, Union Station Development Corporation. Uh, and and what, uh, certainly what, agree that their success the, is important. Can you tell us what steps the department is taking to ensure that, that, that the record of decision will be, will be completed within the final, within the calendar year? Uh, I'd have to check on the latest status of the uh, environmental process, but certainly something that we're watching closely. I visited the site uh, last year, and our deputy secretary was there recently. Uh, I think that in addition to the environmental uh, uh, process, it will, of course, be necessary to identify uh, appropriate uh, sources for funds, and we've been in touch with the mayor and, and others about uh, uh, the visions for how to do that. Very good. Hopefully the record of decision will be, will be completed by the end of the year. That I would have to get back to you on. Very good. And so you want to talk a little bit about the use of the Merchant Marine Academy. I've had the pleasure of, of recommending four, of, of nominating five, five students there. And it's a, great, it's a great school. It's one of the one of the service academies that is kind of the best kept secret among them. People can get out of the Merchant Marine Academy. They can join the Navy. They can join the Merchant Marine. They can do the university. They can write their own ticket. 
Um, but it's made me very sad to see that that the uh, that the individuals in the 10th district who are attending there sent us pictures of what the facilities there are look like. The conditions are well beyond what anybody would expect from an institution, let alone one of our nation's top five service academies. I'm sorry that these conditions would hinder our ability to attract a diverse pool of young men and women needed for our American military sea lift. Um, and it's, it's terrible conditions there. I think have you ever visited the Merchant Marine Academy? You had an opportunity to visit there? Yes, twice. And did you concur that it needs some, some love from TLC? Yeah, like you, uh, I, I share the view that it's uh, uh, one of the uh, um, underappreciated gems of uh, uh, of uh, our transportation system. Uh, and yes, uh, and and I'll emphasize that our uh, budget request includes uh, a robust request for physical capital improvements because they're very much needed for student quality of life uh, and for the uh, durability of the facilities there. Are you sure this work will be overseen by a question? We're out of time. Sorry, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll yield back. I'll ask the question off the record. Thank you very much. I now go 